Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to all new viewers. My name is Olka and I'm a UK-based vet and today I'd like to talk to you about fleas in dogs and cats. Before I get to it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy my content. It is really helpful. I aim to release a video every week. Okay, flea infestation in dogs and cats is the most common parasitic problem. Seemingly easy to get rid of, in many cases it can be a nightmare to fight off completely. I couldn't even count how many times owners begged me to help them, because they thought they were doing everything as they should have, but the issue wasn't disappearing. And they loaded with frustration question, why? In the description below you can find time codes to be able to skip to certain sections of this video if you'd like. Without further delay, let's dive into it. The cat flea and its fancy name in Latin, Ctenocephalides felis, is the primary flea causing clinical disease in cats as well as in dogs in most parts of the world. Adult fleas cannot survive for long periods of time if they are not directly on their host. Most of the parasite's life cycle is in the host's environment. This, in most cases, will be your house where your cat or dog lives. There are four main stages to the flea life cycle. Egg, larva, pupa and an adult form. In the environment, the newly emerged flea is stimulated to erupt from its pupa, one of its life stages, when there is vibration, warmth or carbon dioxide from a nearby mammal. The eggs and adult flea feces are often concentrated near pet sleeping areas, although larvae can burrow down into carpets and move horizontally over smooth surfaces. In certain life stages, fleas can survive for up to several months in the environment. Adult fleas feed on the blood of animals. So, how did your pet get fleas in the first place? Well, many people wonder about this when a vet diagnoses a flea infestation. In fact, concerned pet parents sometimes don't believe it and they insist their dog or cat must suffer from something else. I've experienced this reaction more times than I could remember. People usually feel embarrassed to find out their pet has a flea infestation, as fleas are often associated with dirty environments. This, however, is a common misconception. Although a household that isn't vacuumed or cleaned often is more likely to provide a better environment for fleas to thrive, they can also cause problems in very clean places. Fleas can attach onto your pet or be introduced into your house for many different ways. It can be your garden or backyard, any place you take your dog for a walk, for example a park or a wooded area. Fleas can be found in kennels, cattery, your pet's groomers, doggy daycare or even your veterinary practice. They can even be brought home by you, on your clothes. What are the symptoms of flea infestation? Flea bites form tiny red bumps. It can be harder to spot these bites underneath your pet's fur. You will most often see them scratching and overgrooming. You may also see bald or partially bald patches on their body or red and irritated skin. Usually, most of the lesions are around the lumbosacral area, back end of their back, basically, and around the tail base. There are also other more serious consequences of your pet having fleas. Long periods of severe infestation in young and small animals can result in anemia, from the loss of blood which fleas consume. Long exposure to flea infestation can also result in hyperpigmentation of the skin, skin becoming darker, and lichenification, skin becoming thicker, looking like elephant skin. Flea larvae can become infected with tapeworm eggs. So, if your pet eats an infected flea, it can become a host to this intestinal parasite. If your pet has fleas, you should also make sure your pet is treated for worms. Some animals can develop allergies to flea saliva. It's called flea allergic dermatitis. In these animals, the symptoms produced by flea infestation are much more severe, and only a few of these parasites are needed to cause severe problems and a dramatic presentation. This is particularly problematic when an animal affected by these types of allergies presents in the practice yet you can't find any fleas. Lots of owners won't accept this diagnosis, as they can't actually see any of these tiny creatures. But it is very important to cover them with anti-flea medications, as it is one of the most common problems causing pruritus, or itchiness, in our pets. And in many cases, just a couple of bites can trigger nasty symptoms. How do we diagnose flea infestation? 
In many cases, you can simply see tiny dark specks in your pet's fur, which is the fleece poop, or small browny black insects moving on your pet. Parroting the fur and looking directly on the skin will help notice them. Sometimes you will see fleas or flea dirt in your dog's or cat's environment, for example, on their bed. Failure to demonstrate or see those does not preclude a diagnosis of flea infestation. To assist the diagnosis, vets can use a flea comb and a damp sheet of white paper or tissue. I'd brush their coat, usually around their back end and the base of the tail. This should dislodge some of the fleas or flea dirt. Flea dirt squeezed against damp tissue will turn into red or brown color stains. This is basically the blood which was ingested and then pooped out by fleas. There are some other fancier methods to test for flea allergy dermatitis. However, the results are not 100% reliable. Thus, it's very important to have your pets covered against fleas all year round and if your pet displays any itchiness or skin problems, using an anti-flea product is essential, even if the fleas aren't visible. Can us humans get bitten by fleas? The primary hosts for Ctenocephalides felis are cats and dogs, although other mammals, including humans, may be fed upon. Human reactions to flea bites vary from person to person. A typical human reaction is a small, hard, red and itchy spot. Fleas are not attracted to some people, but other people are highly susceptible. Another important issue to mention in regards to humans and fleas is a tapeworm, Dipylidium caninum. This tapeworm is transmitted when your pet ingests an adult flea infected with the larva tapeworm. Once inside the pet, the adult tapeworm develops and begins to produce eggs which are shed in the pet's feces. A human can get infected when they are in close contact with pets and swallow an infected adult flea. I know it doesn't seem like an easy thing to achieve, however, it is possible. How do we get rid of fleas then? Firstly, even if only one pet presents with symptoms, all your pets need to be treated. There are a wide variety of products used. For own pet use, there are shampoos, rinses, collars, conditioners, lotions, sprays, powders, tablets, spotons, and more. They are produced by many different companies, contain a wide range of different active substances, and the frequency of applications differs. I'd honestly compare the selection of them to sweets in a supermarket, maybe. Different quality, prices, sizes, shapes, and flavors. One can get lost. Powders are quite an old-fashioned and messy way of treating fleas on your dog, as the powder needs to remain on your dog's coat to be effective and can cause illness if swallow swallowed or inhaled. Sprays are also used less frequently than they used to be, thanks mainly to the invention of more effective treatments. However, in very young dogs and cats, this method is still used often, as other medications lack registration to use in such small animals. What about collars? There are two basic functions. Repelling, one type emits a gas that repels pests. These types can often be ineffective as only fleas in close proximity to the collar are affected. This is usually how the cheaper collars work. The other basic function would be treating. The active substance present in the collar seeps into the fat layer on your pet's skin or spreads using natural skin oils. Some collars require a flea to bite before it's killed. Some can deal with them before a bite happens. Read the box carefully to be sure you're getting what you need. A collar like that needs to sit on your pet's neck relatively tightly, but obviously allowing your pet to breathe comfortably as well. If it's very loose or their fur is very thick, it might not do the job. I know many people who swear by collars, including vets and vet nurses, but I personally know of many animals still being affected by flea infestation despite wearing those. On the plus side, some of these collars last for up to 8 months and are easy to use. Spotons usually consist of a small vial of liquid, which should be applied to the back of your pet's neck, in result killing fleas and stopping the development of eggs. There are lots of brands available containing a wide range of active substances. 
However, it's worth noting that some are more effective than others. Most of them need to be repeated every four weeks, some newer products every three months. One disadvantage of spot-ons I can think of is that you need to be very careful and mindful when applying it. For it to work, it needs to be applied on the skin, not on the fur, and avoid any spillage as not to underdose your pet. Also, monitor them for a while afterwards, making sure they don't rub or lick it off. Another option are tablets. They are the newest option on the market. However, it's already been several years since the first ones were introduced. The active ingredient from the tablet quickly reaches tissue fluids just under your pet's skin. When fleas feed, they take in that substance and die. Some of them start to kill fleas after just two hours. The frequency of administration varies. Some need to be given every four weeks, some every three months. One disadvantage would be that in some animals they might be more difficult to give than spotons, for example. But on the other hand, if they take tablets, you can be sure they are in their system, unlike a spoton, which can be rubbed off. Personally, tablets are my favorite option for stubborn flea infestations. However, depending on individual circumstances, I might reach for something else. Lotions, shampoos and washes can be useful in helping get rid of fleas, but they shouldn't be the only product you use. A few general important points to remember. An extremely important piece of information is that you must not use products registered for dogs in cats and vice versa. Some substances, safe for some species, can be toxic to others. Another thing to note, most products are designed for animals of a certain weight. Always make sure you know how much your dog or cat weighs and buy the product meant for their exact weight. Underdosing may result in treatment not being effective. Overdosing could hurt your pet and cost more. I avoided listing particular names of brands in this video. I did it because I couldn't possibly cover them all and wanted to avoid advertising. However, by rule of thumb, something you can get relatively cheaply from a shop without prescription usually won't be as effective as something pricier that you can buy at your vets. Unfortunately, lots of pet owners feel that we are trying to push more expensive products and get easy money, but believe me, there is a good reason for it. The majority of anti-flea medications kill or protect against other parasites too. Which parasites they are varies from one product to another. Sometimes it can be ticks, sometimes mites, sometimes even gastrointestinal parasites or some combination of the above. Before you buy a product, especially if you do it without consulting your vet first, read the leaflet. I can't stress it enough how important it is. Educate yourself about frequency of administration and follow it strictly. Make sure it's the correct species, whether it's a repellent or a killer and how you give it whether it's by mouth, on the skin, or other route of administration. There are a lot of rumors, conspiracy theories, and overall wrong information you can find online. Some people claim that certain medications cause severe health problems or even kill your animals. Look, the truth is these medications need to go through rigorous testing, and if they are approved, as medications, they are safe to use. Of course, all medications can result in some side effects and complications from time to time. But it applies to all medications, and sometimes it's unavoidable. Listen to your vet, not ill advice read on an online pet forum. There are some products which claim to combat fleas and also claim to contain natural ingredients such as oil of citronella, eucalyptus, or even colors made of amber. These usually haven't undergone any stringent safety or efficacy tests, so are not guaranteed to work or be safe for your dog. Always check with your vet before you use any product on your pet. Treatment of the house is nearly as important as treatment of your pet. This prevents fleas from laying eggs or prevent the, the eggs from developing. There are many household sprays available that can be used on carpets and furnishings. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Note that some sprays contain permethrin, 
and great care should be taken not to allow the spray to come in contact with cuts. Other than that, vacuum your carpets, always spray the vacuum cleaner with flea spray and throw away any vacuum bags. You don't want fleas developing and crawling out of there. Wash all available beddings, blankets, anything you can throw into a washing machine. Once is not enough. I usually say to do it regularly, at least for a year, as it can take as long as that for some flea life stages to survive. Don't use sprays near fish tanks as they can be toxic to aquatic animals. Unfortunately, very severe dog flea infestations in a house may require professional pest control treatment. To sum it up, let me remind you of a few important points. Don't give up if you can't get rid of the fleas. You will get there. Just remember to be consistent and most of all follow the recommended frequency of administration of medications for your pets as well as for your household. Ask your vet for advice about which product will be most effective to use. There are honestly a lot of useless products out there. And once you do get rid of fleas, always keep your pet covered for fleas for the rest of their life. Believe me, it is much easier and cheaper to take care of prophylactics than after infestation occurs to get rid of it. Good luck! And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video. Like, subscribe and I hope I'll see you here again soon. Bye!